Good morning, President Trump unveiling more details about tax reform. Let's talk about it now with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Jim, this battle far from over. Yeah, it hasn't started yet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that the big issue here is that uh, can you get any Democrats to vote for it? And more importantly, uh, after listening to, to Speaker Ryan, will all the Republicans vote for it? I think that's almost inconceivable. Some people would say that it busts the budget. There's a difference of uh, 1.5 trillion versus 5 trillion about the amount of costs. Uh, that's uh, the Senate versus the White House. Uh, we don't really know any of the details of the brackets where they come in. I don't know if they know them yet. Um, the only thing that we know about it really is the corporate tax rate and the fact that if you increase the deductions, it's totally possible that the 10 going to 12 is actually means zero. But those people haven't really paid a lot of tax in a long time because they make so little money. Uh, so we lack anything that I would regard as being specific enough to be able to pass it. And yet there's Speaker Ryan coming on CNBC's mm. air saying, we will get this done at your end. That's just inconceivable. So uh, this is a man who came on repeatedly and said that there will be a repeal and replace. There, is cre there are credibility problems, uh, I think, with the Republicans in Congress. Uh, and if you don't recognize those, then you haven't followed the health care debate. It is not easier to raise taxes uh, than it is to do health care. There's a sense that if you cut taxes, that's easier. But if you raise taxes, which is someone like me, if I get this plan, I'm from New Jersey, but I also could be a New York resident, uh, and I can tell you that my taxes go up off of this. Now, if you're a Republican legislator, would you really vote for a tax increase for your people? Are those people, those are legislators, does Ryan really have them on board? I think that they are immediately voted out. So why would you commit political suicide by going with Ryan? So all I can tell you, we don't even know mortgage deduction. We don't know uh, home equity. We don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I think that those who think that this is going to sail through are gravely mistaken. It's the 2018 issue, and even then, I don't know if it can be done. And Jim, you've been talking about for quite some time just this notion of repatriation. Like, let's just get that done. But they don't, they're not going to do it. Uh, right. They're not going to separate. They're not going to separate corporate taxes. It's once again, just like under Obama, Obama's code for not getting it done was to say, OK, look, it has to be comprehensive. We're hearing comprehensive here, too. I uh, covered the comprehensive tax reform under Reagan. It took many years. It took so much cooperation. It was remarkable how hard it w was to do. And Reagan was very affable and had really smart people doing it. Uh, he happened to have someone on the de from the Democratic side, Tip O'Neill, who was willing to do it and shepherd it through. This is the opposite of what we have now. So I think history should be read here about how hard it was to even get loopholes like turning uh, ordinary income into capital gains or getting recapture through. So I think people are really, um, they're being so glib, it's painful. I, I happen to be friends with Gary Cohn. I think he's a terrific guy. Uh, people, there are friends, there are things that precede your job here. Right. Um, and I know Gary's gonna be a good shepherd. I don't think the White House, um, I think the White House's plan, I like very much. Obviously I don't want a tax increase. Uh, but that's okay. If that's what it takes to get America moving, then I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, that angers people never say you're willing to have tax. I don't care. I want America to get more jobs, our country be stronger. But I do really want to point out this is a much harder task than anyone that you've heard from has said. And I think that it is kind of, uh, I don't say it's silly, but it's not a reason to buy a stock or sell a stock. All right, we'll keep watching how it plays out. Jim, let's move on to individual stocks. What did you make of the Deutsche Note on Facebook, bullish on their ad yeah, prospects? Now, I mean, Facebook is caught up, as is Twitter, uh, Google, with the idea of what, what the Russians did or didn't do. The Deutsche Bank note is about money going to Facebook and how it remains a fantastic way uh, for to get a return on investment for advertisers. And this is the principal reason why we have a big chunk of it for ActionAlertsPlus.com and we're sticking with it. It is easy to trade. You could have sold it at 168 and bought it back at 160. I think you were probably more likely to um, buy it at 168 and sell it at 160. I'm trying to prevent that. It's why club members know that we are anti, our biases against trading a lot of these bigger cap names that we think have very good earnings profiles. And this Deutsche Note was not a surprise to club members. I mean, you've been no, talking about this. we've been saying this over and over again, and we are adamant, by the way, that Facebook represents a great stock for the future. All right, meanwhile, more news on uh, Toshiba selling 
that trip unit to yeah, a... Yeah, one of the reasons why we sold Western Digital, we made a really great trade, and we very rarely identify something as a trade for club members, mm -hmm. but we said Western Digital was a trade. We were concerned that in the end, Toshiba would stick it to Western Digital and sell this key Flash business, Flash is very strong, um, to someone else. They did, they sold it to Bain for $17 billion. It's a negative for Western Digital. Now, Western Digital may be able to carve out, but this would be a would have been a great thing for Western Digital. Uh, now you're stuck with a company that has very strong Flash. We know from Micron the other day, the flash is strong, but it has very weak disk drive. That's something also Mike Ron told us. So I would be very careful here with Western Digital, even as I've applied materials on tonight. Internet of Things requires a lot of uh, flash. Uh, obviously, the autonomous vehicles requires a lot of flash. Data center, which is very strong, requires a lot of flash. So just be careful. The group is treacherous. All right, Jim, meanwhile, the interim Equifax CEO apologizing in the Wall Street Journal. I mean, how many of these op-eds are we going to see? Well, I mean, the big issue here for people, you have to understand that there are very prominent cybersecurity people, and I speak to all of them because, like, we had a corporate governance conference in the street where we had a big cyber panel. Of, of course, uh, a previous CEO of Citrix was on. The guy before him is a board member at Equifax, so I really question whether Equifax isn't going to just get sued repeatedly. But the cybersecurity experts I speak to are suggesting that with the information that Equifax has in you, they could conceivably open a credit line in your name. So that's what you have to be careful of, okay? And it's not going to be something that a credit watch company would do. It's going to have to be your bank stopping that. You might want to alert your bank. But that's what the bad guys want. With that, with that information, they could open a home equity line of credit under your name without you knowing it. They could open a credit line with your name because they have way too much information. They have everything it takes to do an auto uh, an auto home equity line, line of credit from the wrong bank. Well, it's good advice. You know, I signed up for that Equifax monitoring, but it only lasts until November. What good yeah, is no, that? It, it's really the other side that helps you. It's your bank. The Equifax right. monitoring, I can't uh, vouch for what that can do for you. Yeah. All right, Jim. Meanwhile, Haynes Celestial striking a deal with an activist investor. Engaged, yes. Do, do you think they'll be sold? No, I don't. I think that uh, Erwin Simon uh, welcomes people who have good new ideas. I think that the company's not for sale. Uh, I would point out that the last quarter was a good one. Um, uh, Irwin came on the show, and I think the company is doing well. There are lots of companies that should want to buy them, but I don't think the company's for sale. All right, here's an interesting company, Thor Industries, one of the biggest earnings beat of this year. Yeah, and we I did a piece of real money about it, and I have Thor on tonight. The experiential camping, experiential recreational vehicle, this is a red hot market. Uh, it has a lot to do with, again, with Instagram. It has a lot to do with an inexpensive way to see the country. Uh, these are things that people do rather than buy uh, consumer goods. Once again, uh, owning things, uh, unless they can generate some sort of experience, just doesn't, don't resonate with, young, with uh, millennials anymore. And I think that we're all wrestling with Amazon, but we should also be wrestling with that point. And in real money, you told us about your daughter going on a big camping yeah, trip. Yeah, she's on a trip, and she has, I've posted on Twitter some pictures. She has a tent that is on top of her Subaru, um, and it is uh, folds open uh, with a ladder that goes down, and it's a very inexpensive look. If she, she lives within means, uh, and she can't afford a recreational vehicle, uh, but th those who can, I think, are thrilled with them. All about experiences. Okay, meanwhile, Kellogg's CEO is stepping down. What did you make of that? Well, I mean, I think there would have been a time where you would have felt that if the Kellogg CEO is stepping down, maybe there's going to be a takeover. No. Um, I think someone, someone from Nature's Bounties come in. Uh, this is the third CEO in that consumer products group that has retired. Irene Rosenfeld uh, retired. And Irene, um, I got to tell you, I, I think, you know, Irene's been on Mad Money. She's pretty terrific. Ken Powell retired. Uh, Irene from Mondelez, Ken from uh, from General Mills, and it's a very tough industry. Uh, there's no real growth. There's uh, negative numbers in these group in these stocks. Uh, we know that one of the things that we thought could put a bid under these was Heinz Kellogg, but Heinz Kellogg will not do hostile. Now, uh, after what happened with Unilever, because Warren Buffett said he's not interested in the other thing that put a bid under him was uh, interest rates. But if interest rates are going to go higher, uh, then uh, you are going to want to regret that you bought a company that yields 2.8. That will not be an offset. That's why the consumer product, product stocks are going down. Are millennials also to blame for some of these challenges in consumer millennials products? Millennials don't like pantry uh, food. They like fresh. Uh, that was one of the reasons what was so attractive about 
about Blue Apron until a lot of other companies got in. It's another one of the reasons why Amazon bought Whole Foods. And isn't that sort of Nelson Peltz's argument with Procter & Gamble, you have to adapt flock to well, millennials and they, what they're into? Well, the, the, Procter & Gamble said that they were having good luck with millennials. Um, what Nelson wants is a Procter to buy smaller brands. They sold a huge number of smaller brands. Uh, you see Unilever often buying smaller brands. That's Paul Pullman trying to connect with millennials. But that is part of the fight uh, over the one seat of the board that Nelson Peltz is waging. Those who have proc owned Procter & Gamble, I know you've been uh, besieged by a blizzard of paper. Mm. Uh, I think that both sides have merit. you got to really think this one through yourself. All right, Jim, speaking of millennials, there was a Piper Joffrey note saying that China could be one of Tesla's biggest markets. What did you make of that Yeah, of but that that's been something, right? I mean, to, to watch. that's been something that you've been saying is going to happen. I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. So we'll watch how that plays out. And then, Jim, on CNBC, you talked about Abbott Laboratories. Well, Abbott Labs is a position for Action Alert. It's a core position. They came up with a glucose monitoring system that doesn't require a finger prick. Uh, what I think is important there is that Dexcom uh, has a competitive system, but Dexcom's a small company, Abbott is big. Uh, Abbott can come in underneath the price of Dexcom, Abbott can get the endorsement of Medicare, so Dexcom is correctly down. Uh, should Abbott be more? Abbott's a big company, this is already a pretty big move for the stock of Abbott Labs, but we uh, remain excited about it for Action Learners Plus. All right, Jim Kramer, we'll look forward to your bulletins. Thank, Thank you, you so much, as always, for more information on the stocks in Jim's portfolio, please head to actionalertsplus.com.